Hey Carp Geeks, this is 2020 me and I'm about to show you a video with 2012 me. So back in the day I was doing research into our original product Biosource and our second generation product Jigsaw. Okay, now both of those have been superseded by our much improved product Impulse, which you may have seen in some of the videos. Okay, so you know, take it for what it's worth, it's a nice piece of history and uh, kind of shows you where it all came from. Okay, take it away. Hi, I'm Pat Mills. You join me in my office here at Joliet Junior College where I'm a chemistry professor. I'm also the founder and president of Biosource Base. Today we're going to look at amino acids and how they lead to stimulation in fish. Okay, first let's look at amino acids to see exactly what they are and how they lead to stimulation. All proteins, be they either animal or vegetable in origin, comprise chains of amino acids. These individual amino acids are released when the protein is digested or decomposed in some other way. The resulting amino acid soup, generated through protein decomposition or digestion, is referred to as a profile. Each type of food gives rise to a unique amino acid profile, as shown by the table. As you can see, certain profiles are rich in specific types of amino acid. For example, fish profiles typically contain large fractions of histidine. Since there are 20 naturally occurring amino acids, food profiles, which necessarily contain combinations of all these species in varying amounts, are typically quite complex. Fortunately, complex amino acid profiles can be simplified by assigning individual amino acids to one of four general classes. Amino acids within each respective class give rise to a similar chemosensory response from fish. The even better news is that these four amino acid classes can be further simplified into two fundamental groupings, those containing either charged or uncharged side chains. A popular misconception is that only certain foods possessing specific amino acid profiles can stimulate fish to feed. This is simply not true. While the profile of any particular food does indeed generate a unique olfactory, smell and gustatory taste signal, we have shown that only a slight excess of either charged or uncharged amino acids within the profile is directly responsible for feeding stimulation. Specifically, vegetable proteins tend to be slightly richer in non-charged amino acids, while meats tend to have an excess of charged species. For anglers interested in learning more about what we've christened the Biosource Interpretation, the underlying science is described in more detail in our Angler's Guide to Amino Acids report, which is available as a free download from the biosourcebates.com website. So, as we just saw, the slight excess of a single type of amino acid leads to natural stimulation. Now, we can invoke an essentially involuntary feeding response by simply increasing the amount of such amino acids. This is, in essence, biosource. What we see here are the results of a study on biosource conducted by Sparshot College. As you can see, biosource outfished other similar untreated baits by a factor of approximately 2 to 1. Now, the downside of single amino acid stimulants, like Biosource, is that the dosing has to be very precise. Too little and the fish will not be stimulated, while too much and you'll get the dreaded jacuzzi of unhittable bites. The optimal, or Goldilocks, zone for single amino acid dosing is very narrow. To use an analogy, it's something like trying to set your kitchen faucet to deliver exactly 4 gallons of water per minute. Dropping below 3.9 or nudging above 4.1 just won't work. This, in many ways, helps to explain why amino acids have been so unpredictable in the past. Fortunately, the good news is that we've been able to develop and patent a range of strict manufacturing protocols that, in turn, generate the optimal amino acid flux for a variety of popular baits. Anglers wishing to try these products should look for the Biosource logo, which only appears on officially licensed goods. Unfortunately, getting the concentration of single amino acids just right has proven to be very difficult. The good news is that we can get around this problem by using an amino acid and site blocking molecule mixture. As we'll show you in the next clip, this behaviour can be modelled by using some coloured marbles, which represent amino acids such as this, and a simple wooden block. The wooden block model contains 36 indentations, 
each of which represents one of the fish's individual amino acid binding sites. The empty receptor set shown here is indicative of a non-stimulatory condition or simply no detectable food within the fish's vicinity. If we now look at the condition arising from exposure to a typical meat profile, it can be seen that the fish's amino acid receptors become saturated with a characteristic mix of charged blue and uncharged yellow species. As mentioned earlier, the mild stimulatory properties of all natural profiles are attributable to a slight excess of a single amino acid type. This excess is easily revealed by removing pairs of cancelling or metamodulated species. Here we see a summary slide illustrating the difference between a natural meat profile and its underlying slight excess of stimulatory charged amino acids. As discussed earlier, simply adding to this natural excess increases stimulation. However, as illustrated with our kitchen faucet analogy, introducing either slightly too much or not quite enough of the required amino acid does not lead to optimal stimulation. Here we see a slide summarizing the narrow Goldilocks zone of amino acid dosing necessary for optimal stimulation. As previously mentioned, this narrow patented flux range is exceptionally difficult to achieve and is likely responsible for the past unpredictability of amino acids. The quantum leap for amino acid stimulants came when we realized it's possible to lock in the optimized amount of stimulatory species by adding a now patented fraction of unreactive site blocking molecules as modeled by the white marbles. So, while original Biosource and now Jigsaw both possess optimal levels of stimulatory amino acids, the significant difference between them is that Jigsaw will now not overstimulate fish at higher dosings. This is ideal for spotting and other carp fishing applications where larger volumes of bait are initially introduced. Here we see the results of a second independent study conducted by Sparshot College, but this time featuring Jigsaw. As we can see, Jigsaw treated baits outfished otherwise identical untreated ones by a factor of better than 2 to 1. As we've just seen, Jigsaw returned some phenomenal results during testing. In addition to the field studies conducted at Sparshalt College, which scientifically proved Jigsaw to be at least twice as effective as any other bait, simple aquarium studies also confirmed the result. Let's take a look at some tests. Okay, talking through the setup here. I've got a medium-sized tank. It's uh, actually in my basement, so the water's on the cool side. In there, there are five koi and one goldfish. What we're going to do is pop in some expander pellets treated with jigsaw on the left, and the same number of baits, but treated with just plain water to act as a control on the right. Coming up on the four minute mark here, we see the fish are starting to gravitate towards the jigsaw treated baits. This is typical, it takes usually between four and five minutes for the stimulant to start to leak out of the bait itself. A couple of words of advice if you want to try this at home. First, turn off your filters, and second, use only the minimal amount of stimulant in your bait. The idea here is that you actually only introduce stimulant around one of the baits and it doesn't fill the tank. If you have a large flow of water or too much stimulant, the fish will just go nuts throughout the whole tank. You're trying to show that one bait's more attractive over the other. We're coming up on the five minute mark now and what we've done is we've zoomed into the left feeder which contains the jigsaw treated baits. The fish are actively searching the gravel. This is entirely due to the presence of the jigsaw stimulant which has seeped into the gravel. This behavior will continue for at least another 20 minutes. So we've reached the 14 minute mark and as we can see the fish, although still browsing around the feeder, are searching with much less intensity. This is typical of a small amount of bait which in turn contains a small amount of stimulant. In a fishing situation where we use larger volumes of bait with larger stimulant loadings, the feeding response is sustained over a much longer period of time.
So we're at 20 minutes now, and what we're actually going to do is remove both of the feeders. And what we actually witness is a very interesting response. If you take a look at the left, what you'll see is the fish still remain in the area. This is because of what I call the tea bag effect. If you think about removing a tea bag from a cup of tea, think of the last remnants of the soak oozing from the tea bag. This is exactly what's happened here. The stimulants actually seeped back into the gravel and the fish have reinitialized their searching behavior. And this continues for another eight or so minutes. So that brings us to the end of our video. I hope we went some way to explaining how amino acids act as fish feeding stimulants. For more information, feel free to check us out online.